There's a story here in Genesis chapter 9 about some people who were starting all over again. I mean all over again. Noah and his family. Noah and his family had just come through the flood that destroyed the whole world and they got to start the whole world off again, over again. I'm glad God gives us a chance to start over, don't you? And over 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 again. You ought to thank the Lord for that today. But here in this story, God, after the world had been drowned, then God makes them a promise. Now we know the flood was a universal flood. Don't believe this bunch of uh, teachers who teach that it was only a local flood. You know that for lots of reasons. One reason you know it is because God said, I promise I'll never do this again. And there's been a lot of local floods since. So whatever that was then, it never had happened before, and hadn't happened since, and will never happen again. God is going to destroy the world again. Next time it'll be fire, not going to be water. So in this story this morning, God makes a promise. And for time's sake, uh, let's look down in uh, Genesis chapter number 9, where God makes a promise. And He said here, He made a, he made a covenant with Noah... And he said this, verse 12, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow, God, that's the rainbow as we know it, the rainbow, in the cloud. Notice that. It's in the cloud. It ain't a clear sky. The rainbow's in a cloudy sky. It shall be a token of a covenant between me and you. See that? And the earth. Verse 14. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. All right, I'm going to stop reading right there this morning and talk about God's promises and use the title of one of our great hymns in our hymn book, Standing on the Promises. I love that song, don't you? Never get sold. Uh, Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, Standing on the Promises of God. As we enter into this new year, 2004, never has there been a shakier time. Financially, our our institutions, our government, the world is more unstable now than it was this time last year. Your job is less secure than it was this time last year. Your health is less secure than it was this time last year. It's a scary time. It's It's a spooky time. It really is. It looks dark, and the world has no answer. And the world's leaders this morning have no answer for the mess we're in. Of course, they try to make it look like everything's all right. They try to uh, make it appear like things are getting better. But the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord said evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. So as we begin this new year this morning... I'm going to repeat some things that some of you have heard me say, but I hope you'll bear with me. We've probably got uh, 75 people in here that have never heard what I'm getting ready to tell you this morning. I'm preaching on standing on the promises of God. There's ever been a time when we need just to stand on God's Word. It's now. I tell you what, I've done it for all these years. He's never let me down. And I don't know about you, but as for me and my house, uh, we're just going to trust the Lord this year. I'm not looking for something else to believe in, something new to join. I'm not looking for a new philosophy to try to uh, elevate me into some kind of sublime uh, state of consciousness. I think I'm just going to stick with what I know has worked all these years and know the old book's still true and God's promises are still good. Amen. Somebody said, uh, if you're having trouble, just go hang around God's promises. He always comes back by that way sooner or later. He'll be back by directly if you'll stand on the promises of God. Now, God gave Noah the rainbow as a, a, a token of His promise. 
And he said, Noah, every time you get scared, every time you get worried, every time the sky gets black, every time you think, "Uh uh-oh, he's going to do it again, you just look and you see that bow in the cloud. And you think, that is my promise. Has anybody in here seen a rainbow lately? I mean, seen one? Okay. Then guess what? It's 2004. God's still holding true to that promise. He made Noah 4,000 years ago. I might promise you something and I might break it. I might not be able to live up to what I... You might promise me something and might, might break it. You might not be physically or mentally or spiritually able to keep your promises. But I'm telling you something, brother. If God has promised us something, you, if you can take it to the bank. I mean, it's just as good as already happened and we're to stand on the promises of God. Now, what a rainbow is this morning, uh, you know, scientifically speaking, a rainbow is a reflection of the sun's rays, even though you can't see it. Cloud hides the sun, but the sun's still shining. And it shines over top of it, and it, pr- it creates this uh, uh, circle of colors that we see as the rainbow. Now, the sun represents the Lord Jesus Christ. His, uh, his promises are real. And even though we can't see the sun, we see the bow. So the bow lets us know the sun is still shining. Now this morning we can't see God. We can't see God with our natural eyes. I can't see the Lord. I can't see heaven. But I have His promises here in this book. And this book promises me. The sun shines and gives me His promises. You know, uh, just because you can't see the sun don't mean the sun ain't shining. The sun was shining all night while you was asleep last night. It's just in China or somewhere and just coming up. It's always shining. The moon's always shining. The moon is shining right now. You might be like some of them them old country people and still a lot of them don't even believe they really went to the moon, you know. Uh, A lot of them believe, oh, they just faked that and went out there in the desert so they could rip us off for a few billion tax dollars. And you know, to be flat honest with you, you know, you never know. Uh, they might. But now, I believe they went to the moon. I, I believe. I'm educated. I'm up to date. American. I believe they went to the moon. One old farmer come in and he said, they didn't go to no moon. He said, I was watching that on TV. And I went out and looked. The moon wasn't even out that night. But what he meant was, what he meant was, is that the clouds were hiding the moon. The moon was out. He just couldn't see it. I'm going to tell you this morning, the sun's always shining. The sun is always shining. You just can't see it. You just can't. And I'm telling you this morning, are you listening to me? You listening to me real good? Here we are at 2004. Listen, the same God that was real back there 15 years ago is the same God in heaven that's real this morning. You just can't see Him. You might not can feel Him, but bless your little pea-picking heart, whatever that's supposed to mean. You are assured this morning that the promises of God are still true. God's still going to keep His Word. God's still going to keep His Word. So I want to say a few things about that this morning. I want to say, first of all, this morning, we ought to stand upon the promises of God. The rainbow appears in a cloud after the rain. That means we're to stand on the promise of God's protection. I'm trusting me, I'm trusting for me and my family that God would protect us in 2004. You know, I know people that worry themselves sick and sick all the time. Well, I'm afraid this is going to happen. Well, I'm afraid that's going to happen. Well, I'm, I know people that won't let their kid out of their sight because they're afraid something will happen to them. And I don't think you ought to just turn your kids loose. You know me. But listen, there's going to come a point when you're going to have to trust God to take care of them kids of yours. Listen, I mean, I have mine's grown here this morning. And I don't, I'm not always little. And the older they get, the more apart our lives grow. They are, I let them stay down there the other night in Mooresville where I preached and, and uh, my two uh, sitting back here this morning and one of Corey's friends. And I told them, I said, now y'all be careful driving home. And you know, you as a parent, you just think all kinds of stuff. You think, Lord, they're going to have a wreck. Some drunk going to run into them. I, how many of you parents worry about your kids? Running? You can't help it. You can't help it. I mean, tell you. And then, but then here comes a point. There comes a point where you just got to say, God, they're in your hands. God, I've tried to raise them right. God, I've tried to teach them. Right and trust God. I don't know about you, but in 2004, I'm going to turn them girls back there over to the Lord and I'm going to say, Lord, they're your girls. You let me borrow them for a while and I'm asking you to protect my girls in this coming year. Amen. As we go into this new year, let's stand on the promise of God's protection. Amen. 
I heard about this fella uh, one time who got, sorry, I told you about another night. And these guys grabbed him around the corner. They was going to beat him up. Like this, talking about up there in New York. And they grabbed him around there and said, where's your money? Where's your money? And they reached in there and pulled out a New Testament. And when they seen that, I said, oh my goodness, he's one of them. He's a Christian. And they threw that thing down and took off and didn't beat him up. And didn't rob him. Listen, that book protected him. That book protected him. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, we're, we're just, we're like that fellow standing down on the street corner one day. He's doing like this. And his buddy come along and said, Hey, man, what you doing? He said, I was keeping the elephants away. They said, Man, what's wrong with you, you crazy fool? He said, There ain't an elephant within 2,000 miles here. He said, I'm doing a good job, ain't I? Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. There ain't no elephant. He must be doing something. And you know what? That's the way we ought to. We ought to just kick back. We ought to just kick back. And listen, you can't help from getting a. You say, Well, I'm doing everything I can to get. Well, listen, brother. The flu disease is so little or germ. It's so little you can't even see it. It might be in the air right now. I spit it out right there. You don't never know. When somebody coughs, they say germs go 10 feet. Ha! Hit that wall right then. I mean, think about that. You know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to say, God, if you don't protect me, I just ain't going to be protected. I shook hands with everybody in North Carolina, I believe, this week. And I try to wash them once in a while. Most of the time I forget. And brother, I tell you what, brother, you just can't, you can't protect yourself from everything. You just got to say, dear God, you protect me. And then if we get sick, pray through it and ask God to help us through it and stand on the promise of God's protection. Amen. Don't be like Michael Jackson. Oh, Lord have mercy. I a rag over his face and sit up and you know, his nose is so little now he couldn't get a germ up it. No way. He ought to just he ought to just not worry about it and get right with God and trust the Lord. Amen. I tell you what, brother, it appears in the cloud after a rain, stand on the promise of God's protection. We ought to we ought to pray before we go on a trip. There's a man got on a trip and he's on a train and he prayed, God protect me. God protect me. God protect me. And at three o'clock in the morning, the train engine died, and they couldn't get it started, and they try, and, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. And that old boy said, "Hey, you know what they figured out? The bridge was out right up ahead, and when daylight come, they seen it. And if the engine hadn't have died, they would have ever one plunged to their death. And it was God intervening. And you know, I've seen the Lord do that to me over and over and over. Something you happen, something will happen. You think, boy, this is really a hindrance. But when you get down the road a little bit, it it wasn't nothing but God protecting you from something that could have happened or would have happened. Thank God. Hallelujah. His hand is on His children protecting us. Listen, I ain't got enough sense to know what I ought to do. I ain't got enough sense to know where I ought to go. Everybody I ought to go to see whatever. But thank God His hand's on me protecting me. Stand on the promise of God's protection. Amen. I haven't got time to talk about that a lot this morning. I want to say secondly this morning, the rainbow appears when it's partly cloudy. Stand on the promise of God's provision. Now listen, you know what I'm fixing to say? If God's going to protect us in 2004, then the Lord's going to provide for us in 2004. I talked to somebody this morning. They said they're laid off. Somebody said, uh, man and wife, uh, daddy and mama laid off. I, mean, I don't want to ask for a show of hands this, this morning, but I'm going to tell you what, brother, you'd be shocked if you saw the people in here this morning that's out of a job and can't get a job. I'm not talking about lazy. I'm talking about people who just can't get a job and are trying to. I'm not talking about people that just won't. I'm talking about there's people in here this morning that would love to start to work tomorrow morning and just can't do it. And you know, nobody will hire them. Nobody will help them. And I'm going to tell you what, we're in a scary time. But I'm going to tell you this morning, brother, the Bible said, My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. Amen. Have I told you folks lately that God does know how much your light bill is? Yeah. He knows it before you ever get it. He knows how much your house payment is. He knows. And if you're trying to serve Him and doing the best you can, brother, He's going to provide for you. Amen. Now if you're lazy and won't do nothing, you can starve to death. And he said you should. That's what he said. God said you ought to starve. He said man won't work. He shouldn't what? Eat. eat. So don't dare work. Or don't eat nothing this week until you work some. 
And if you ain't got a job, go out and pick up dope bottles. And somebody told me the other day, they said, well, Brother Danny, I can't. You know what I'd do if I didn't have a job? I'd go down here to a car lot, first car lot I seen, and I'd say, I'll wash every car on this lot for five dollars each. And if he wouldn't let me, I'd go down here. It beats sleeping, amen. And brother, if you'll do the best you can and put forth an effort, God Almighty will take care of you. He'll take care of you. I'm telling you, buddy, He's took care of me when I didn't deserve it, when I didn't, uh, when I didn't earn it. God's took care of me. Stand on the promise of God's provision. I heard about a little boy here some years ago, and his mama that was way out in the cold. You used to hear about stories like this years ago when we didn't have it as good as we got now. We got it as good now. Somebody will help you. Heard Medicaid, Medicare, uh, uh, the, the social services, and everything. And I thank God for all them things. I'm glad there's help for people that need help. But years ago, buddy, people didn't have nothing but their faith. And they, and they lived up in them old mountains, and there wasn't no telephones, wasn't no way to get help, couldn't call 911, snow that deep, no wouldn't. I mean, it happened to a lot of them. The old man downtown drunk somewhere, blowing every bit of his money, uh, a paycheck in a bar somewhere, and mom up there with eight or nine kids in a little old ha- uh, cabin on a hill in the snow. Brother, you talk about learning how to pray? That's when you can learn how to pray. Yeah. It's hard to pray when you got three cars in the driveway and air conditioned and, and a room full of food and, 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 and a closet full of clothes and you walk in there and it's hard for you to make up your mind what you want to eat you got so much. But buddy, when it's all gone and you open the wallet and there ain't a dime. And brother, I've, I've been there, buddy. I've had to push my car off to get to where I had to go preach. And I've had, listen, I've hung up a, I've hung up a, a, a sheet across our kitchen so the heat would come in the bedroom so my girls wouldn't freeze and went in the kitchen in the morning and there'd be ice in the kitchen sink inside the house and ice on the window. And boy, little old Betty Siegler oil heater. But I tell you what, some of the sweetest time I've ever had was when I got down on my knees and I said, God, I'll never make it if you don't help me. And he did every time. Amen. Every time, every time, every time God helped me. He's never left me do without. He's never forsaken me. He's never, ever, ever left me alone and let me starve. Stand on the promise of his provision. You say, why do you have to get so loud? I have no idea. I don't know. It just comes out that way. I tell you what, if I could scream louder, I would. I'd let them hear me downtown. Some of them need to hear some up yonder in some of them places. But I'm telling you, brother, He'll provide for us. You know what our preacher told us? He said, God will put His angels on high rations before He'll let His young ones starve to death. Let me encourage you, child of God. If you're right and you're prayed up and you're doing the best you can, God is going to take care of you. I heard about this man way up in the mountains. And somebody come to him and said, We're starving or we got no wood and we're freezing to death. And they just had enough wood to get them through the weekend. And the daddy come and he said, Give them half our wood. And mama looked at the kids. And the kids looked at mama and said, What are we going to do? She said, I don't know what we're going to do, honey. Daddy doesn't give half our wood away and we ain't got enough to do us through the weekend. Says, Tomorrow's Sunday. We can't, can't get none on Sunday. We'll have to wait till Monday. And the kid said, what are we going to do? She said, we'll bundle up in the bed and tell stories if we have to to get us through the weekend. We'll just lay in there and tell stories. No telephone, no TV, nothing like that. We'll just lay in there and bundle up and tell stories. And we'll bunch up together and keep each other from freezing to death. And that man told him, he said, listen. He said, I'm going to share what we've got with other people. He said, if, if God's real and God's who He said He was, He said He'll send us more wood or He'll warm the weather up, one or the other. And they said, but I don't know about this. They said, are you crazy? And He gave away His wood. Amen? Yeah. You know what most people do? They'd say, no, sir, that's my wood. That's my wood. You know, that man gave away half of His wood. And boy, they said a little bit later on that night, somebody knocked at the door and it was a merchant man from downtown. And that man said, hey, he said, I'm in this blizzard. He said, I don't know what to do. He said, I got this load of wood here that I was taking to town. He said, I can't get it. The wind's blowing so hard. He said, is it all right for you if I just... He said, I'll just give it to you if you'll just let me lay it down. And boy, the daddy went back in the house shout, said, hallelujah. I told you he'd send more wood or he'd warm the weather up. I'm telling you, God will provide, brother. He'll provide. He might provide you with a chainsaw. He ain't going to cut the tree down and slice it up and throw it in your stove. No, sir. Amen. Stand on the promise of God's provision. 
Amen. I tell you what, boy. I tell you, listen. I heard about a man who was down upstairs praying. And he's praying. He needed $10 this years ago. 40 years ago. He's praying $10. Him and God get his car on the road. License for his car. And he's down he's praying, Oh God, oh God, oh God. And about that time, his wife come up and she was downstairs. She said, Hey, are you praying for $10? And he got down there and just screamed it out. And he said, Yeah. She said, Well, you can quit praying. Somebody just shut it through the door down here. And boy, that's right. She knew her husband could get a hold of God. And listen, those kids, those kids, by the way, if you're married people here this morning, or you're not married, you have children, you're divorced or whatever, don't, don't sit around and talk negative and whine and worry about what we're going to do, how we're going to pay in front of your kids. If you've got to do it, go in the bedroom and talk to God about it. And when you get in front of them kids, say, hey kids, God's going to take care of us. Let them kids grow up seeing mom and daddy trust God. Let them kids grow up saying, hey, I remember what mom and daddy did when they got up against it. They prayed. And if you'll pray, they'll pray when they get in a tight spot. If they see you wring your hands, say, I don't know what I'm going to do. Somebody give me another volume. I don't know how I'm going to make it through this day. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I guess I better go get drunk. You know, something like that. That's the way they're going to grow up. But if they see Daddy grab Mama by the hand and get down and say, Dear God, we need your help. We're trying to do the best we can. Then they'll know that you can stand on the promise of God's provision. I want to say thirdly and last this morning, the rainbow appears. The brighter, the, the, the darker the cloud, the brighter the bow. The darker the cloud is, the brighter the rainbow shows. That means the darker it gets in our lives, the brighter God's promises come through. Whew. Amen. Stand on the promise of God's presence. As we go through this new year, stand on the promise of His presence. The biggest mistake you can make as a Christian is go by your feelings. You listen? If you go by your feelings, sometimes I feel like preaching and sometimes I don't. If I preached when I felt like it, I wouldn't preach half the time I preach. You know, usually by the time I get halfway through, I feel like it. You know? You know what I'm saying? Don't go by your feeling. There's people here, right? Not here this morning because they went by their feeling and just said, I don't feel like going today. You're right. You're right. Amen? Are you listening to me? Don't go by your feeling. Sometimes you get up and say, I'd just rather watch TV. I don't want to read my Bible and pray today. You will never amount to much for God until you just learn to say, hey, God's here. His presence is with me. Listen, His presence is here. He's here. Somebody said, well, I went to church that Sunday and the Lord wasn't there. Oh, yes, He was. You might not have failed Him, but you ain't never been nowhere where He ain't. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know the glory and I know I, there, there, there's a difference and I understand that. But brother, God's presence is with us. You know what He said? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You say, How, what if you leave him? How can you leave him if he won't leave you? See, it's like, it's like me trying to get away from my jaw. Yeah, yeah, I can't get away from my jaw. It's part of me. It won't leave me. I can run. I can run. By, I, I can't get away from my jaw. It's part, and listen, he's part of you. You're part of him. You can't get away from him. In your heart, you can drift. In your heart, you can get wicked and backslid. But I'm telling you, brother, you better realize his presence is here this morning. His presence is here. Somebody said, well, I used to get such a blessing at church, but I just don't get much out of it anymore. It ain't because God's changed one bit. And it ain't because the Bible's changed one bit. He's still here just as much as ever. It's just you need to get your heart back in tune with Him. Yes. Amen. Stand on the promise of His presence. You've heard me tell this story. And if you have, just pray. There's a bunch of people here that need to hear this. And I'll close. Preacher went to see this man who was real sick and about to die. And he told his daughter, he said, where's he at? And she said, I'll take you in here and show you where he's at. Daddy's in here in his bed. She said, preacher, daddy ain't got long to live. He said, uh, he, he's, uh, he's bad off. So he went in there and there laid that fella. And there was a chair like this on one side of his bed. And there was another chair on the other side. So the preacher goes in and he said, how you doing, brother? And he starts to sit down. And he said, no, 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 don't sit there, preacher. The man laying in bed, he said, don't sit there. He said, do you mind sitting over here? He said, I reckon he'd come over here and sit down like this. Kind of looked straight. And he said, that man laying there in the bed, he said, he said, preacher, that's where Jesus sits. He said, every day I talk to him and Jesus comes in here and sits right there. He said, I used to be able to get down the floor and pray. And stuff, but he said, I'm not able no more. So I just look over here and talk to him. And the preacher went, whoa. And he could feel God's presence in that room. And he said that, he said that man laid there like that. And he's bad off. And the preacher uh, had a word of prayer with him. About two or three weeks went by. He was uptown and he ran into that girl. And he said, 
how's your daddy doing? He said, I went and seen him the other day. He said, how's he doing? She said, preacher, you didn't know it. He said, dad passed away. Last week or so, he said, dad's gone. He said, oh, ma'am, I'm so sorry. She said, no, don't be. He said, don't you be sorry at all. He said, dad's a lot better off. She said, you know something, preacher? Did he ever show you that chair? Where he said, Jesus, he said, oh yeah, he sure did. He said, man, I felt God's presence in that room. He said, he did show. She said, well, I want to tell you something. She said, the morning we went in there and found my daddy laying there a corpse. She said, his cold, stiff body was laying in that bed. Daddy was gone. But she said, daddy's head was turned right over there toward that chair in his hand. Was that like that? And she said, it was just like the Lord said, you ready to go, Pop? He said, yeah, I need to like that. And I'm going to tell you something, people, this morning. If you got to go, that's the way you want to go. That's right. I really want the rapture to come, the Lord come take me out. But if i got to die, that's the way I want to die. Because His presence. Stand on the promise of His presence. I know the world's crazy. The world's crazy. And the more you let the world influence you, the more messed up your mind's going to be. Your, your mind, some of you are far away from God in your mind this morning. But I'm telling you, He's still real. He's still good. He's still right. Stand on His promises. For you that's discouraged, you that can't find work, everybody in here that can't find work, if you'll give us your name, we'll write them down on a piece of paper, and we're going to pray for you to get a job. Amen. 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 Everybody in here, sick. we got so much sickness in here, we need to write everybody's name in here and get up here and lay hands on them all and pray that God will touch Because it might be me sick next week, it might be you sick next week. We don't know. And our, our God that took us through 2003 will take us through this year and stand on His promises. Let's stand by our heads for prayer this morning. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. We're going to stand on His promises this morning. Stand on the promises of God. There may be someone here this morning say, Preacher, the first year, first service of this new year, I'm coming to the altar this morning. I, we, you've heard us preach about reading your Bible all the way through this coming year. You've heard us preach about being faithful to church. Maybe you need to make up your mind. I'm going to be in Sunday school. I'm going to, be, I'm going to get on fire for God. Now, I know you can't keep everything you always vow, but we ought to try. We ought to try. We ought to try. Father, do what ought to be done in our hearts this morning. I pray for that one of those here this morning who needs to take you at your word that they'll come to you and trust you and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. I pray for that Christian that's discouraged. Lord, that this morning you'd build a fire in their soul. And Lord, that you'd help them, dear God. Help them, dear Lord Jesus. Help them, dear God. Dear God, please, have mercy on us this morning, Lord. Help us to stand on the promises in 2004. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're singing.